All right, so really quickly, we're just gonna go through and show you how to set up the basic properties to get your Epson 4900 running. So devices, manage devices, you know, you'd add a printer, select the 4900, a, a different menu will pop up here and you're gonna add the 4900 from there. Just make sure the port actually points to something that says Stylus Pro 4900. Then you're gonna go to Q, properties you're gonna make sure it's 1440 1720 color when you go to your substrate color this is originally gonna be white and you're gonna go choose color switch to CMYK space and move the black all the way over media setup if you're running a, a 17 inch roll it comes with that as the default if not you have to add new media you know, when I run a 13 inch roll, I usually set it to 12.9 to ensure that it doesn't go over the edge. I usually set a 0 0.05 margin on all four sides. Layout manager, make sure it says mirror job on import so you don't have to futz around with that ever again. The rest of these you can leave as is. Get down to color layer. You're only gonna mess with this if your white isn't properly centering underneath your print and you can move it up and down and side and side using this make sure this says no mirror here because we already have that selected make sure this use multi-page document as layers is also unselected processing under processing 20 percent under white is pretty good uh, anywhere between 55 and 85 is going to be your maximum white strength um, you should check your set your choke to minimum make sure you press flat and sometimes you're gonna have issues with PNGs if flattened is not selected printer options 1440 1720 this is your regular everyday print quality another one I like is 2880 1440 this is much slower but it's a it's a better looking print you will have to do some color adjusting if you switch to that it is going to darken your print um, but you get better solids with that. Color white, default, default, photo black. Your ink order will depend on how you put those carts in there. Uh, this is my general setup. Uh, starting from the left, you're going to have four whites in a row. Then three empty slots. And on the right, the last four are going to be cyan, magenta, yellow, with black being the absolute last cartridge on the right. Inline speed set at normal. However, if you go resolution 2880, 1440, and switch this to fast, it's gonna be far higher quality than 1440, 1720, and it'll be a little bit slower, not a ton slower, but normal 1440, 1720 is your, is your everyday running. Premium photo gloss paper is pretty good. Um, one thing to keep in mind, some of these options you pick like i actually really like the colors that come off of single weight matte paper but if you select that the exit wheels will come down and start putting marks in your print um so your everyday run is perfectly fine under photo and the exit wheels don't come down paper suction always have 100 percent paper thickness will depend on what kind of film you're running but 0.7 is pretty good Print direction, bi-directional. If you switch to unidirectional, it prints half as fast. So you really wanna leave it in bi-directional unless you're having banding problems. If you're having banding problems, switching to unidirectional, switching to high quality, switching to that 281440 can help clear that up. Um, you're not gonna mess around a lot in here. Max Inc, 265 is pretty good. It may come in from install at 240, 255. Um, however, I think those are going to give you a little bit of light and you'll be more prone to banding, more prone to, you know, odd more patterns in the prints. Um, now let's go printer options. If we're switching to this 2880-1440 and I'd also be running fast and then I'd go into Max Inc and I'd drop this down to 238 because that 2840-1440 lays down so much more ink you know, a light blue might become a dark blue and a weak yellow might become a bold yellow, which might be something you want. But if you're trying to match colors on the screen, this is going to throw you off to a degree. So 
I usually drop my max ink down or I'll go in here and the color adjusts. Um, and I might turn up the brightness or I might bring down these four by five points each, negative five, negative five, negative five, or brightness up five just to compensate for the extra ink being laid down. A couple other random things in here, um, you know, brightness is obviously what that does. Saturation is just gonna lay more ink down. The chroma, if you're trying to print neon colors and you do not have fluorescent ink installed, chroma is a, a, a interesting little cheat you can use um, by bumping up the chroma you're gonna get more obnoxious brighter colors you're never gonna get a neon you're never gonna get a fluorescent but it's gonna get you closer but if you bump that up in general um you're you're gonna have color problems in the majority of your jobs i use this once in a blue moon when someone's trying to make a neon green or a bright pink solid and then i'll bump up the chroma to compensate but that's the gist of it. And if you do all that and press OK, you should be ready to start printing. You may have to fine tune as you go, but that's the basic gist of it.